Welcome everyone back to the channel. In this video, what I'm actually going to bring you is more of a buyer's guide and a long-term review of the Intel Core i5. This is the 9400F. This is an Intel 9th generation CPU. Yes, I know the 10th generations are out right now or just getting released on the desktop side of things. Uh, but I thought I'd give more of a long-term review of this, kind of an unboxing and kind of go over everything I think about it and why I think this may be a better purchase for most people than what you think. Uh, I know there's a lot better CPUs you can get out there, uh, but for, I think for the price point, this is one of the better ones you can get, especially if you have a micro center in your area, which I will talk about that as I go. So let's give you a uh, quick idea of what you get in the box of an Intel Core i5. Uh, again, this is a 9400F. That's an LJ1151 socket, uh, an Intel 9th Gen 6-core uh, CPU with six threads, but I just want to give you an idea of what's in the box. It has some little info there on the sides, but that's really about it. Intel does not put a lot in their boxes, so you'll basically get a little guide here. Kind of goes over a few things. It does come with a three-year limited warranty, so that's good. Uh, this is interesting. It's some of these come with coolers and some of them don't, so generally they'll put the CPU up here. Uh, obviously it's already in my system because I've been I've had it for about a year, but it'll come up in there. And you do get a little cooler, which is nice if you need it in a pinch. Again, not the best cooler out there. You can spend $20, $30, $40 and get one much better, but uh, if you're looking for a free uh, CPU cooler and don't plan on overclocking it uh, and you're not worried about fan noise, this will actually work. And uh, overall, do okay in your system. So that's all you get. Again, you do not get a whole lot in these unboxings or general box. You're basically just paying for the CPU and then sometimes they throw in a little cooler there uh, just on the side. Through. So a little about the CPU. Again, it's a 9400F. It's a LGA 1151 socket and it is a ninth generation CPU. Six cores, six threads, um, still in the 14 nanometer uh, architect architecture that Intel has, uh, 65 watt uh, CPU, and this does not have, the F basically means it is missing the graphics, the Intel uh, graphics that they have thrown into it, but I honestly think if you're getting a desktop computer and you're going to spend a couple hundred dollars or over a hundred dollars on a CPU, you'll most likely get a GPU anyway, so I'm not really sure why anyone would buy a processor with a GPU already built in. I know it's nice if you're not going to have a dedicated uh, graphics card right away, uh, but again, you can save a little bit of money usually getting one without one. Uh, so I actually paid $119 for this, $120 at Micro Center. I'm lucky that I have one in my area. Uh, the suggested retail price on this is between $140 and $155. That's based on what Intel has here on their page. Uh, it's actually $144 to $157 is their uh, recommended price. And this is a 2.9 gigahertz processor. It can boost up to 4.1 and I did do a quick Cinebench of this which I will uh, show you later on uh, to kind of give you an idea of how it runs uh, when it comes to getting up to that boost and if it can sustain that and what kind of temperatures it runs at. I know temperatures are related to your actual cooler also but uh, I'll kind of go over, go over what I have running there. Uh, so the reason why I went with this is that I wanted something that I could do a little bit of video editing on that isn't going to completely blow my budget. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a desktop computer and I wanted something that had six cores, something that could handle the workload that I throw at it. So all these videos that I do, I edit on this CPU uh, and generally I'll try to get an idea of what this one uh, takes to uh, render, but I shoot everything in 1080p at 30 frames per second, uh, nothing fancy, I don't need 4K, and it usually takes about 10 to 20 minutes to render uh, just a general videos that I've uploaded over the past you know, several months. Uh, that's generally the time frame, a little shorter depending on how long the video is and how many uh, clips or other uh, uh, photos I throw up in there. Um, so that's kind of why I bought this, I had a budget, I wanted to spend $150 or less. I, it's not that I'm Intel loyal, but I'm familiar with their CPUs, I'm familiar with installing them, so I generally don't even look at the AMD side of things. I generally stick with Intel because I've had good luck with them in the past, and again, I have a micro center near me, so you can really get good deals on motherboards and CPUs there, especially if you bundle them together. So that's why I went with this. Uh, 
paid $120, $120 for it. I had an under $1,000 budget for my total system. Um, so that's why I wanted to get uh, something a little cheaper on the CPU side of things. I did not plan on overclocking this, which is one reason why I uh, went with this, not a K processor, because I don't... Uh, it, uh, overclocking is not something I'm really into. Uh, and for gaming, you really don't need all that many cores, so this is, in my opinion, overkill for gaming. I don't do a lot of games anyways, uh, but, you know, when I run... Uh, Civilization or Borderlands or anything like that. It doesn't have any any problem. It's mainly GPU related, but uh, this is a good all-around CPU. Uh, so over the past year, again, it, it does have a three-year Intel warranty. I have not had any issues with this. I've actually not had any issues with any CPUs I've ever, ever purchased. Uh, none of them dead on arrival, no issues with installing or anything like that. Um, and that's really it uh, when it comes to uh, just reliability. Generally, I haven't, again, had any issues with Intel CPUs. Uh, this is a 65 watt processor, and I will now show you the Cinebench that I ran. Uh, the CPU uh, overall runs pretty cool. I have the cheapest Noctua uh, cooler you can get. Uh, it was a $40 general air cooler. It only has one teeny tiny fan on it, and the CPU uh, during, I did two Cinebench runs, uh, so the second one you'll see in the recording here. Uh, it generally does not get to the 4.1 turbo boost. It stays around the 3.9, around that area. It sustained that at 100% throughout both Cinebench scores, so I didn't have any problem there. And when I'm rendering videos, uh, uh, it, it maxes out at that 3.9 and just sticks there for the whole time. There's no issues with that. Uh, the CPU generally idles between 35 and 40 degrees. And uh, when I'm pushing it, even when I'm doing any type of lengthy photo, photo or video editing, uh, the hottest it ever gets is 65 degrees, which is well below the threshold. So I'm pretty sure you could heavily overclock this if you wanted to. Uh, or if you had a K-series, you could probably push it a little bit harder, but that's not something I really care about, just to save a few minutes. I'm not in any big rush or doing anything professionally. Um, so again, you can look at those numbers there that I have up on the screen. Um, so who's this CPU actually for? Uh, I still think it's relevant in 2020 if you don't want to spend the extra money for the uh, down the line uh, uh, 10 gen. I believe they're on the 10 nanometer, so they're, they're going to be a little bit better, a little bit more efficient. Uh, but if you can find this at a deal or you can find a used one that you know works, uh, or if you have a micro center around, they're still on sale right now for $120, $119.99. Uh, I think this is the best bang for your buck GPU, just for about anyone. If you're doing any type of video editing, gaming, uh, photo editing, you're just looking for a, a good CPU uh, with six cores. Again, it only has six threads. The newer Tension has 12 threads. Uh, but if you're not wanting to break the, break the bank, break the bank, this is the best CPU in my opinion for you. If you're on the AMD side of things, there's a million options there that you can go with, but if you're looking for something solid, reliable, uh, doesn't get too hot, uh, runs cool, uh, and again, I'm only using a $40, it is a, a Noctua is a better uh, CPU cooler brand, but uh, it's got a small fan on it and I haven't had any issues with it overheating or having, having any problems. Uh, so, if you're looking to spend over $1,000 on a system, and you have a $100 $150 budget for a CPU, uh, I would highly recommend this for anyone. Uh, I don't plan on upgrading for a long time down, down the road, so if I needed eight cores or, or something a little more, I, I could spend a little bit more on that. But this is this will last me for the next five to 10 years. I'm not pushing uh, a lot of content out that requires me to shave off two or three minutes just for a couple hundred dollar extra CPU. Uh, so that's it guys, I'll put the link below both to the Micro Center and uh, to this on Amazon. It's hard to find on Amazon now, but I'll try to get a link for it down there. And I'll get a link for the Tension, which I or just released. Uh, they're not currently out yet to purchase, but they do have the links up already. So I'll throw those down below. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, and that's it guys. Uh, again, it's a good purchase for $120, especially if you, even if you have to drive a couple hours to a Micro Center, you're going to save $40 or $50. Uh, and you can get a lot of other good stuff there on uh, good deals. I'm lucky I have two basically within of an hour and a half. Uh, one is actually half an hour away, so I 
kind of locked out there. Uh, thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.